spiritual realm. And we and we still thinking that what we were seeing is real. It's like that lunar landing in 1969. <laughs> that was fake. And they give you Diamonds Off Forever, the movie with James Bond, and they show up faking the lunar landing on the movie when they break into another sound stage fighting and they end up faking the lunar landing. Yeah. Then they give you the movie, Capricorn One, change it to Mars. You know what I'm saying? And you believe it's a lunar landing. I want to ask you this question. This is funny here. Y'all bear with me. You know, I know y'all can take a few curse words. You done sent your fucking children to fight for this cracker and you didn't even blow up a building. So don't be asking me nothing about why the fuck I'm cursing. <laughs> That's kind of backwards, ain't it? You done sent a million people over there to fight for this cracker a fucking redneck and you don't even make wink an eye. Sing songs. Send canned goods. But I curse a little bit. That nigga that wrong. Tell your ribbon. He got backwards. <laughs> you see the, the programming? Because you never get off the child level. Yes. Permanent children. Mm. Pathological grown up children at large. Not you. Uh, but <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> now, rescue me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Here is a. This is a circle. They got a picture when you see these people bouncing around on the moon. <laughs> bouncing around on the damn moon. They show them bouncing around on the moon and you can see the curve of the moon. Now I live in Mullet, South Carolina, where I used to when I grew up years ago. Mullet, South Carolina, population 6,000. A little small piece of land and I ain't never seen the curve of Mullet's. So how the hell are you going to see a big ass curve on the moon if you're standing on the moon? Y'all get welcome up from here. They show him bounce around on the moon and you can see a curve on the moon. That means the moon can't be no bigger than somebody's room. When you go outside and you can stand on this earth for the rest of your life, you ain't going to never see no curve on no earth. They bounce around on the damn moon and they thinking this shit. And did you see the trash in come on now? <laughs> when did this cracker build something that didn't tell? And you see this little, this little thing that they landed on the moon sure. with? Look like a trash can with legs. <laughs> a dumpster. You understand this thing here now? My then they get to Apollo 13, they're supposed to get lost in space. And what do they do to get back? They tear part of the ship and make some device in the ship. To get back to space. Now I'll rescue me if I'm wrong. If you out there on the damn highway and your transmission fucking fall out, there's no way you're gonna take a radio, some air conditioning stuff, a, 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 a mirror, and make you a transmission. It ain't happening. Here goes tomorrow from way out in space, ship break down, and they get shit off the off the ship. And make it something you believe all this foolishness. What's that, brother? Two thing also. When they, all those pictures you saw, you never saw no stars. Yeah. No stars. No stars. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, the, it's the just ridiculous. The big bright sun, the sunlight coming over the horizon every time they show out of space just pop boggles me. Ain't no sun outside. It's supposed to be but cold the sun, and dark. But the curve. Right, and it's always curved. You see the curve, they bounce around. You see the curve of the moon. If you stand on this damn building, you can't see the end of the building. How the hell you stand on damn building? And we supposed to leave this foolishness. Another thing, all the pictures, there's over 3,000 pictures that they brought back here. They supposed to been true that by a lens that a black man invented with crosses in it. Mm -hmm. They found pictures, when they looked at them close, that had objects like the flag flying in front of the cross at a lens. Okay. Impossible. It's just, it's just, it's just ludicrous. My now, come on. Nah, nah. Okay. Right. Now, that's what all three of them out there, ain't it? Now, look. <laughs> you can't get reception. You can't get reception on your damn radio right. past fucking 20 miles. <laughs> and yet they don't see a clear picture of the damn moon. I'm supposed to be this shit. <laughs> the moon. And the, and the pictures had shadows. Wait a minute. Have your, look here. They can't even build a damn decent dish in it rain <laughs> and the shit go out. Can't even fuck it up. Right. But yet they can go all the way to the moon 
Light years away and the shit clear. They say they kill, they say they have killed. They say they have killed so many damn people connected with that thing when they fake that thing. You see what I'm saying? So you can't believe nothing on this dog on TV. Give me some questions right quick. What's that? What is the hype behind this the new so museum Yes. Very key. Just remember this, when I go into this particular stuff and break this thing down, that the first thing that the government hit when they got into Baghdad is they, while they was blowing up shit and people was hiding under their beds, they was in there and they looted the entire museum. Now, listen to this. They went into Panama back in 89 and nobody looted nothing. You see what I'm saying? They went to Kosovo or whatever. Nobody looted nothing. They had these walls. Nobody looted nothing. They had them to go and specifically loot things because of the simple fact they had to cover up that they had gone in and snatched the whole museum. They had to, when they were blowing, when they hit Baghdad, the first thing they did is went to the museum. That's why they went in. Then they went to the library, got what they wanted out of it, and then put the rest on fire. So you wouldn't understand what was missing. See what I'm saying? Yeah. See how this thing goes? So they didn't um, they didn't loot nothing. America went in there and blew that place up for a week, got what they wanted out of the museum. Then when it's all cleaned up, they said the people looted. Now you know damn well if any Arab is walking around with anything four thousand years old, he'd be a dead person when it comes to this crap in here. Another thing dealing with the moon. Now, this is just nigga logic to me. <laughs> Since when did the white man go somewhere and didn't want to go back? You know what I'm saying? They got land around here that ain't worth nothing. They won't give it to you. You know what I'm saying? They got mud, swamps, mud, mosquitoes and shit. They won't give it to you. The sixth when the cracker gonna go to the moon. What should be the greatest real estate in the history of the earth uh -huh. and not go back yeah. since 1975? Uh, well, I think it was the last one, 75 or 77. I think it was 75 was the last one. That don't make no logic. We know the cracker ain't never went somewhere and took it over and didn't stay and didn't go back. So for the mere fact, my point, now here's the thing. You get on a space station, which is not even stable, that means that shit can float off into the here yonder. <laughs> but here you got a stable moon and real estate. Right. Why not build a space station there? Yes. See what I'm saying? Yeah. That cracker might run around this motherfucker, but he don't run this shit. And that's what you got to understand right now. He don't run nothing. And everything is good. He don't run nothing. What you got to do is you got to get all of the goodness as children out of you in this particular aspect. All of your mores and all of your piety and things that you don't do, you know what I'm saying? Because you're good, honest, decent people. You gotta wipe out all of that to become the gods and the monsters. Gods and monsters. <laughs> like I said, do you think Godzilla gives a damn whether you made your bed? <laughs> Whether you put coasters down for your glass of drink on your table. Or whether you took your shoes off in somebody's house. You think God's gonna give it that? Well that's what you are, the monster of soul. When we get into this thing here. You got to become the monster. That's why when you see the monster, you scared, but you see the monster all the time. All kinds of beings and stuff. That is us. We've seen the enemy. And it is us. What's that, sister? I was going to ask you, do you think all this moon stuff is just another Spielberg production? Well, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's the whole concept. It was, it, it was a Hollywood production that they faked in Hollywood. Now, you say, well, what does this got to do with now? That's 1969. Because they knew once they faked that moon landing and you bought it, it ain't mean that you can get there. You, they can do anything to you. They can move forward. Right. Just like they faked. That, just like they blew up their own building two years ago. They knew once they blew that building up, the two World Trade Centers, oh, yeah. then anything they come and say terrorism, you're going to get down with it. You see what I'm saying? 
That means all of you all are vulnerable if they want to call you terrorists, except me. They ain't fucking with me now. You see, I get kind of sad because motherfucker they left me alone. I'd be like, damn, I want to get into some action. You know, they come after Dr. York. Right. This asshole going to admit to some stuff. He's a government agent anyway. And I, I, I'm glad because any people ever need to follow Dr. Young. <laughs> I'm glad now. I, I want to know now if I tell Messiah. He's supposed to be the man of God, the Messiah, and yet he locked up and can't get out of a damn jail. You see what I'm saying? See, hey, I'm telling you. They, they know who to left them. Uh, I, be, I be in my house kind of sad. I mean, I feel it left out. They done killed Carly. Yep. They done got y'all baby in y'all way. They done got H. Brad Brown. I be like, damn, man, when well, I'm going to get some action. I'm going to go come against me. You see what I'm saying? When they gonna come against me? Cause they know I deal with all things dark and deadly. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't leave me alone. They say, we gonna leave that nigga there alone. I already know right now, I can go kill your boy and you go out to the police station. When they find out who it is, they go, well, ain't nothing we can do about that shit. <laughs> now I know this thing here because I, I, I realized uh, my ex-girlfriend, Ginger, put my phone in her brother's name, you had it, we put the phone in the brother's name. Right. The nigga from the Nation of Islam ran my phone bill up in 93. You know. So put the phone in, 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 the, in, the, um, in her brother's name. So she called me back and said, well, my brother might be coming to school down in Atlanta, so you need to get the phone out. I said, okay, no, I'll get the phone out of his name. So now, we got some credit. It checked out. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's social security number, whatever, shit check, check out. I get the phone. Then they come and say, yo, uh, uh, we can't put the phone in your name right now, something about your line. And we're trying to figure this out. Well, what is it? It was in the name of two, two days ago. Tap it. Huh? Yeah. What is it? And I realize what it is. They got to wait until they get the right person to come there and bug the place mm -hmm. to put the new phone number up in there. Right, right. Because it's in your name. You see what I'm saying? So they, it was bugged. You see what I'm saying? So my point is, and they got to go get the right person to do that. So my point here is, they're not messing with people who ain't scared and people That's right. are, are, who are not scared of the spirit world. That's right. And the So they're messing with the religious folks. Mm -hmm. You people that think there's boundaries and limitations on what you can do. Got your ass. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I ain't messing with that. That's evil. No, the cracker is evil. You a slave. You know what I'm saying? This man is diabolical. Oh, I'm messing with you. You scared of everything but him. Mm -hmm. You turn your children over to him every morning. Mm -hmm. You go to lay up in his hospital and turn your life over to him. Mm -hmm. And don't think it's valid when a black person tells you, hey man, you shouldn't go to the cracker. But yet everything else in the spirit world is evil. Black. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, black. You see what I'm saying? And, 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 and you know, so the point I'm trying to make here is, are they, I want some action. I want some action. I'm like, y'all come on with it. I'm kind of lonely over this one. But I'm like, let's get down. Let's get down. It's time to get down. It's time to, it's time to show. And I ain't, I'm not talking no junk. I'm telling you what time it is. They ain't messing with people because uh, they ain't messing with people. They only fucking with you religious folks. Lining up with Allah, Jesus. They're going to get you killed. Once you say, I'm with Allah, we'll see what about them arrows. They done blew a little all our man hole. They had a little ball over there. They blew his arms off. He ain't had no arms. But in the name of Allah, they killed damn Arabs wholesale in the name of Allah. And Africans. In Africa. yes, sir. God is an absentee landlord. Ass. They done killed 35 million Africans with AIDS. To 40 million Africans. So, the American black population is over here. They don't chill with AIDS. And you still talk about my God. Your God is an absentee landlord. And you better understand what time it is if you're not God. What's that? I would like to know, you know, Colin Powell is a black man. You have to know why is he allowing it? He ain't no black man. Colin Powell is a government agent. You ain't no black man. Why is he allowing it? He following orders. He ain't being used. He down with the thing. But I'm going to let you in on this little secret right here, too. Now, y'all mark my word with this, because you got to understand science. Colin Powell, Condoleezza Rice, Kofi Annan, they're the ones that's running the actual government. Look, they're the 
one is running the government. It's like a ghost government. Right. You have, see, it's players. It's like a chess game. Now, we know that you got five million people that run the world, which is the uh, secret societies. The person that they put out front is George Bush. But in actuality, the people who actually have the, the, the skills to run the government is Congolese Rice, which ain't no slowly. This is a Russian scholar. Right. Got a whole ship named after her. The Congolese. Is it Congolese or Congolese? Whatever. Something like that. Congolese or Congolese? Whatever. <laughs> they gonna let, they gonna let these niggas do this. And then you got, what's his name? He's the one that's all the diplomacy. Kofi. Uh, 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 Secretary of State, whatever. Oh, yeah, Colin, Colin Powell. Powell. Then you got Kofi Annan. And then you got this Brooks. So the whole face of the government is actually out front is all black. They showed a picture in the New York Times and I, I, I didn't bring it. They got a picture of Congolese Rice standing up in the White House like this. And George Bush is at the desk like the secretary. This is a whole game they playing. They put it in a movie called Deterrence. Write it down. Deterrence, 1999, Kevin Pollock and Cheryl Lee Ralph. Deterrence, 1999, Kevin Pollock is the star and Cheryl Lee Ralph. Kevin Pollack is playing Bush. Shirley Rapp is playing Congolese Rice. In the movie, this is 1999. Now, he didn't get elected until November of 2000. He didn't become president until 2001. What is it that they have a movie about a man who gets appointed president because he didn't win the election, just like Bush did? So Kevin Pollack plays the president who gets appointed. So to show his muscles, he goes and picks a fight with Saddam Hussein's son and is going to drop a bomb on Iraq. And Congolese Rice is right up under him. And she's actually telling him what to do to keep his, 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 his image, to keep his, his stuff flowing the right way. But at, and then France, in the movie, opposes the war. And then France also gives, gives Iraq bombs. Now all this stuff here happens. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? There's a movie about the Iraqi war, and all of this just went down the last two months, came out in 99, if you don't understand. And this is 2003, and it's called Deterrence. And at the end of the movie, he turns to Cheryl Lee Ralph, who is Congolese Arise, and he says, I leave it all up to you, I'm retiring. You see? And that's why she's the one that's running the actual White House. It's a spirit thing that's going on. It's like when our God come to kill you, when, when, when our God come to kill them, because you up in the way kill you too. Or they shield themselves, because the devil always know what's going on before the righteous, so-called. Because that's the problem. You too fucking righteous. <laughs> you see, give me some more questions and we're going to go into this lecture. What's that? Yeah, when they came to get the secrets. Yeah, the movie Pi about a guy who had the secrets of the mathematics of the Kabbalah and the and, and the whole thing of the energy and all that. Pi. Oh, what's that? Michael Moore. Yeah. Voted for Kabbalah by Michael Moore. Yeah. What's that, sister? Yeah, we're going to break that down in a few minutes. I'm, I'm, that's that's going to, that, I, I, in order to do that, I got to go into the whole elaborate scheme of that in the lecture, which I'm getting ready to start in a few minutes. Give me some more questions. There's a massive assault for Detroit. Yeah. Huh? There's a massive assault for Detroit going on. Uh-huh. As far as all these barbarians trying to come here, what's the reason? To the whites? Yeah. Coming in the city? Yeah. That's all over the country. In Atlanta, it's the same thing. Then it's taking back their city. It was a white man wrote a book on Detroit. Uh, they say they worked on this for 70 years to, uh, to, 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 to repopulate the inner city with white folks. And so the reason why your streets and all this messed up, that's for a reason. Bring the property value down. It's a whole concept, you know. But the whole thing is a relocation plan. They're doing it all over the country. I went to Milwaukee. That's what I'm saying. Spiritually, they're moving back toward that, 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 
It's the reason why. The huh? Is there a reason why spiritually why they're moving back toward that um, urban area? It's got to be because they don't just do something all together at once. Probably well, it's interesting you said that because in Atlanta, uh, every time it floods, it don't never hit the ghetto. You know all the stuff in, I think about it, you go to all these things. I, I have the option, I have the luxury of traveling all over the country. Since when did any major catastrophe hit the projects? Don't ever hit the projects. Ain't that something? Yeah. They say that the reason why California hadn't fallen into the ocean, because they got enough niggas out there to keep it up. If it was all white, it would have been falling into the ocean. Don't you know that most of the major ca catastrophes don't hit the urban centers in America? Right. We don't ever get the, nothing. Never hit the ghetto. We got a place. We got the West End in, in Atlanta. Well, you know the black area, and every time it can just have a. If it rains over an hour, crackers is floating down the river. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been now. I've been in Atlanta for 16 years, and ain't nothing never hit the ghetto. So. That is because of our energy holding up shit. Because right. right. we, the, they, we live in some of the worst areas on the grid lines. You see what I'm saying? They, they move us to the stuff that has the lowest amount of frequency of energy. But we don't need it because we're an energy source. You see what I'm saying? Because we're, 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 we're an energy source. So that's what's happening and stuff. So it, 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 it seems to me it would be feasible to move because they're not, cause, because, okay, they're moving a certain population of the black people out, but the ones that would, was able to sustain themselves, the whites are moving next to you. Yeah. Yeah. Right, man. You see? Man, so crazy. And this is going on all over the country. All over the doggone country. You see them? What's that? Oh, stop. Do you think that was uh, Weather Mouth? Hurricane Andrew, the one that hit Charleston, South Carolina. No, Charleston South, I think it was spirit. Remember now, a lot of those hurricanes are coming from the Middle Passage. They're coming off the Atlantic Ocean in the Middle Passage. Now, Charleston, South Carolina has a big slave port, one of the most notorious slave ports in the country. You know, South Carolina had more blacks than any state. I mean, they had literally thousands of blacks hitting the coast. You see what I'm saying? And it's still in the Stone Ages and stuff to this day. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it is the most progressive of between South, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. South Carolina is the most progressive. You get a lot of people come out of South Carolina because it, the Congo was dropped there. You know, Jesse Jackson, for what it's worth, is from South Carolina. Um, <laughs> what it's worth. Um, you get a lot of, but that's on, on one particular aspect. Even James Brown was born in Bornwell, South Carolina. You see what I'm saying? Wesley Snipes. A lot of people got a lot of, so, um, but, so when it hit there, that's a, that was some energy that actually happened based on <coughs> that hurricane thing that happened with, what you call it? Let me give you another science on how things have happened when, since, since he got on that. In the, what, what was that, the 1950s? When did Charles Drew die in North Carolina? Was it the 40s or the 50s? In the 50s, Charles Drew, who was the person who invented then it, drug, blood plasma, blood transfusion and all that died from in North Carolina because what? He got in a car wreck and it wouldn't give him blood. Let me show you how the spirit works. So the scene shifts to right after Christmas. Duke University in North Carolina ends up giving a little Asian girl the wrong blood. And it bring down the whole fucking hospital is under scrutiny because they, what they, they gave the girl the wrong blood transfusion in North Carolina and Duke being the top school in North Carolina. You see how the spirit works? So they denied Charles Drew and as a result, here goes some of the top doctors in the world. Do a, couldn't get a simple blood transfusion and gave the girl, that was a heart transplant or something? And lung transplant or something, give her the wrong blood and the world girl died. That's spirit. That's Charles Drew energy coming back. North Carolina, he dies based on not giving, getting blood. She dies based on the blood, not giving the right way. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. 
in North Carolina at the top university. That's how the spirit works. That's how, that's how, that's the ancestral thing that's going down. We're gonna get into in a few minutes. Give me two more questions. We're gonna go into a uh, uh, we're gonna go on into the lecture. Give me some more questions. What's that sister than you? Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, not these black people here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, you can, let me tell you something. As far as I'm concerned, you can have that damn country. I grew up in the South. I don't even like grass. Fuck dumb shit. Damn if I'm gonna milk some cows, plant some corn, all that shit. Send me to a goddamn supermarket. <laughs> you know, we always say that, return to the land and all this kind of thing here on, I know that. But see, we're going to be victims of thinking logic. You must not accept yes, yes. what your brain gives you with logic and common sense. This is how you're going to override and go to another level. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. You know, it's like sex. You know, if I take a paddle and paddle you on the ass right now, you wouldn't like that. But in the sexual aspect, that might be a, a attribute to some of you sisters. You'd be like, it ain't going hard enough. <laughs> now what am I talking about? I'm talking metaphysics. You have to stop being human. So it's logical for you to grow food. And we've been hearing this shit for 10 years. Oh, we're going to turn to the earth. We're going to damn all of that. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. <laughs> we have to go to another level. We got to think outside of the environment. We have to think outside of what your brain is programmed. You got to get a new program. You see what I'm saying? So, um, the key why I'm saying that is this particular thing here. We don't need to be around anything that takes you out of the center of knowledge. If you go into the country, means you're going to be cut off from the information. This is the age of information and knowledge and how to get knowledge. You see what I'm saying? That is the reason why you are more advanced than the people from Mississippi. That is the reason why New York is the most conscious place on the planet. You see what I'm saying? You see, because it, so we talk about information. Now you're going way out there and stuff with some corn and some weeds and all that stuff. Well, you might live a happy life and all, but you're not going to know nothing when it comes to becoming a god. Because you cut yourself off from the centers of learning. And that's what this thing is about right now. We got to learn how to override all this type of stuff. We're not going back to what we came from. We are going away and we're getting ready to destroy the known universe. You see, so we're not returning to shit. We can't return to nothing because we are a new entity. Yes. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt. We're going to something else. You see, we're not returning to no hunting and gathering in no water, in no Egypt, in no Africa, in no beating no drums. We ain't coming, we ain't, we ain't doing none of that. We are going beyond what the scriptures say. We're coming forth by day. Yes. We're going beyond humanity. Humanity is the enemy. Yes. See, this is a new paradigm. I ain't going to give you nothing. You see what I'm saying? No, I ain't supporting life. Fuck life. I'm supporting death. Yes. Life is the enemy. Mm -hmm. Now you might think that's some crazy stuff. <laughs> but what I'm dealing with, I'm dealing with the alchemical principles of change, the book of changes, chaos, which is your melody. Chaos is disorganized force where change is supreme. You don't get this, you don't get it. That is the flow of the universe. Change is supreme. So we're not going back to that. I know we're on the back to Africa movement, we did all this kind of thing, and why things haven't worked, why things don't work for us. They don't supposed to work for us. The sister was concerned about 
what's going on, all that shit is good. The more mayhem we got, the more things are changing. I'm going ahead of myself. You see what I'm saying? Now, please, don't say that nigga crazy and don't ask me the question to clarify what I'm talking about. You see what I'm saying? Uh, her and then you, what's that from? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, the, 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 the last comet that came in February, two times larger, larger than Jupiter. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. What we're talking about here is cosmic. The comet just came. They kept that. Now the Hale Bach comet came in '97, and they plastered that one up. This one here, they kept quiet. Came in when it was January or February. February. And this particular one, they're keeping quiet. Everything that is in the universe is inside of your body. So the comet coming is like your soul coming. Coming forth by day. And these are harbingers of energies that's inside of you. As above, so below. As within, so without. As on in the bottom, as up under, as up on top. So this comet, all this is a connection. You see, all this is a connection. What we're dealing with here is the new paradigm. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not going to give you all the stuff and all uh, of, 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 of how to improve your life. You see what I'm saying? That's not what this shit is about. It ain't about life improvement. You see what I'm saying? I give a damn whatever, whatever to do. I mean, if you take a clothespin and put it on your ass, good. Anything out of the ordinary. <laughs> But this ain't no shepherds and stuff, and this ain't no damn Hebrew 101. This is advanced God school, and we can teach you how the gods behave, because that's how you're supposed to be behaving. You know what I'm saying? You know. So now, because we're not talking about piety. And you say, well, what is this, well, this guy here's talking about breaking all the rules. No, what I'm trying to tell you here is, we had a certain cycle of thousands of years that we had to build laws and mores and stuff to keep us in that particular cycle so we can survive within the context of humanity. What we're talking about here is the ending of humanity and the destruction of the known universe. So therefore, those things don't apply to you no more. You know what I'm saying? So you can gossip about people, you can talk shit. You do what the hell you want to do. You got the right to behave like a lunatic. Anything you want to do, that's what you're supposed to do because you're breaking down the fabric of the matrix. That's what you're talking about. One other question. What the brother had the question? Uh, okay, what's that? Yeah. Um, in, uh, could you give us a comparison of uh, fear and our perception of death in the old and in the new era? <clears throat> in the ancient world, they used to teach a person all the great neat things about death. And they had a complete understanding about death. So when it came, they looked forward to the day that they could get the hell up out of here. You understand what I'm saying? The Western man feared death, so therefore you don't want to die. And therefore that's what the fear is. You understand what I'm saying? That's what the fear is. You know, you don't want to die. You, I want to ask you something. Uh, do you see the dead trying to knock down the door to get back up in here? Think about it now. People I love you, I love you, I love you. But when you die, when they die, they ain't trying to get back up in here. The fuck don't want to come back up in here. You know what I'm saying? So the whole concept here is a Western concept of the fear of death. There's a book called Through the Gates of Death by Dion Fortune. Through the Gates of Death by Dion Fortune. In her first chapter, she talks about um how the, the Western man, which is the European man, his greatest concept is he didn't understand death and he feared death. Didn't understand death and he feared death. So give me one more question so we can go in. What's, what's that? Uh huh. Paul, Paul, Paul's was Paul. Got to change his tape. Well, he changed tape. We're going to go on into the next. Dion Fortune. Dion Fortune. All right. Okay. Um. She asked a question about the space shuttle. Uh, when Devil Blair said something about the Russians blowing it up, um, what I got on the spirit realm is the spirits 
blew it up. Because they don't run space. You see what I'm saying? That's why they couldn't go to no damn moon. The moon is sacred. That's the home of the goddess. They couldn't go to no moon. You know, that's like going to hell. Um, they don't run nothing. What they had, they had the Jew in there, and they had all this little thing here. Every time they had that old multicultural shit, got the black man, they got the Jew. And isn't it ironic that the last one went down was a black man on it? But the point I'm trying to make, this one here, the spirits blew it up. To let them know, because they was, you know, because they're arrogant. And they think that they can run every damn thing. And that's, and so let them know that they ain't in charge, they blew that up. You see what I'm saying? I know, so that's, that's what we got from the spirit realm. So, because we check things on both realms. And on the spirit realm, they say they blew it up. Uh, they say they blew it up. Any more questions before I go into the lecture? You want that, brother? Uh, they've been they've been digging and stuff. Ain't nothing to really be found. They've been talking about a hall of records. Uh, they've been digging into pyramids and they've been digging stuff and all. Most of the stuff is not to be found because most of the stuff is in the human aspect of things. Uh, remember I saw the movie The Jewel of the Nile, 1985. They was looking for a jewel, and the jewel was actually a person, a human. So there's really nothing to be found. See, the thing about it here is, uh, the book stops with us. So whatever the deal is, they've been barricading things off for years and stuff like that, and, all, and, and trying to get to the, trying to get to save themselves by trying to get some type of information. They got all the information in the world. They know what time it is, but they know they can't do nothing about it. They have a standstill. Uh, they have a standstill. So yeah, they, they, they they've been they've been sex, um, doing that with the pyramids and things for the longest and all, but they can't find nothing because they know what is to find is in the Western Hemisphere. So they fought that war. Looking for a stargate. Let me go in there. But the stargate is here. You see, but they fought the war, and there was there is a stargate, and there was some energy, and they just made things worse for themselves because uh, they lost that on the spirit realm. I'm gonna get into that when we go into the war thing. What's that? Uh huh. Yes. Yes, they do. No. The Iraq, there was some stuff in Iraq that was legitimate. They had to go in there and they had to get. <coughs> Number one, it was going also after the goddess Astarte, which is a form of Isis, which is a form of Lilith, which is a form of, she's actually Oshun, and a couple other things that's going after that. Um, and they had to go up in there at this particular time, but uh, ultimately, and there was a porthole, we're going to go into that, and there was some energy over there, and they fought to try to contain that energy. It's all also in the movie Core. Go see the movie Core. When we go into this thing, we're going to deal with that. And so they, 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 they did go to a vortex, a stargate, but ultimately, the stargate is here, so no, no matter what they do, it's still here. But they did go to an uh, actual stargate. What's that, sister? You know, um, you told us to look at dark crystals. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I used to wonder if there's a lot of dark I'm going to go into all that in a few minutes in the actual lecture, but what I will say this particular part about what you said about at risk is very key. Um, the people, this is the way the spirit world does things. The people that accept a certain amount of knowledge in the time span of the last 10, 10 12 years, 13 years, those particular people who accepted knowledge and information and wanted to learn and wanted to know aspects of the spirit world alternative to that which was given to them. They 
have a banner of protection around them. And they use the other people out here as the ones that sacrifice to go through all that hardship. So we are always at risk, but not the conscious. It's usually the dead people who are vulnerable. And that is because the spirit world knows that there's certain work that the conscious community has to do and has to obtain a certain amount of energy and a certain amount of knowledge. So what they did is that they used the other dead folks out there that don't want to know nothing as the scapegoat and the guinea pig to take the grunt of what is preserved for you. So, you know, so, so, so basically you are protected as long as you continue to produce the spark of wanting to know and not feel comfortable in what you already know. So we got too many isms. We got some people that won't go beyond Egypt. And Egypt is a bunch of fragments. You got some people won't go beyond Europe. You got some people won't go beyond this. So even the ones that's going into another consciousness, you don't want to deal with all of it and you got to put it all together because it's all fragments. There is no complete system left on the planet. All of it is fragments. You see, so now we have become, we like to dwell in what we become efficient at. That's the ego. So I, I know a little bit about Egypt, so I'm only going to deal with Kemet. And Kemet has probably got the least amount of information, although we know that it's the greatest library on the earth, but it's fragmented. You see what I'm saying? You got to deal with all of it, all existing stuff. You see what I'm saying? You got to deal with all of it. And nothing that you think that, they, that you think that white people invent, white people didn't invent nothing, so all the Greek stuff is ours, all the Celtic stuff is ours, all the Holy Grail stuff is ours, and you need to deal with that stuff. You see what I'm saying? The missing keys to ancient Kemet is in the Greek mythology. It's in the Greek mythology. Plutarch told you that. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, so going back, you will preserve as long as you possess the knowledge to know. We ain't worried about the rest of these niggas out here. Tell them let Jesus save them. <laughs> Fuck it. Tell him, let Jesus save him. <laughs> Jesus is my life. Well, see what our life doing. Shit, and them fucking motherfuckers are dying wholesale on our life. If anything, you Muslims should have understood that that shit don't hold no water no fucking more. Because them goddamn Arabs, and let me tell you, it ain't because you black and all that, because when they went into the, the place right before Baghdad, the, 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 the land, um, Basra. Basra. Basra was 85% blue black Arab. They were the original people there. They killed them like damn flies. Britain been there since 1800. Hmm? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So my point is this cracker don't have no problem. You say you all are Jesus? He said, well, you might well go over there and screw his mama while you at it. Because we know there ain't going to be no spiritual recourse behind all on Jesus. That's a fake cold word to get you off the track. You see what I'm saying? Because you too good. Piety will get you killed. That's righteousness. Righteousness. You know what I'm saying? That was built for a time when you was in your civilization, which was righteous. Right. Now you in a damn cesspool. Tell me, I'm righteous and I'm living in the damn sewage. I'm righteous. So I'm going to hold this bar dookie this way. Maybe this hunk of shit in my hand this way. Because it's kosher. It's still a hunk of shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray with this dead rat and my wife got to leave the room because she's on her period. Ludicrous shit. You know what I'm saying? So you Muslims, oh, I'm sure she's on her period, she can't be up in here. That's the whole shit. That's when you want her to be up in there. And when she on her, I say, shoot. You know? Now, what's that brother that we gonna go to the lecture? Yeah. Yeah, to distract you. Do they are they in corporation? Uh, do they do they cooperate with you? Do they do they depend upon you as far as are they receptive to you? 
Well, that's good. I said some family members are receptive. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it was times like, I came across the other day, so I came to the other day, and the family members were speaking on, like, directly against you, they can still use your family as pawns in the game. And a lot of times it's financial. Most of the time it's financial when this thing oh, uh, gets, gets going. You know what I'm saying? Most of the time that's that's when it hits based on it's financial. You know, like that now. Um, not unless there's some grave thing, not unless they're on their deathbed, you know, sometimes you gotta step back. You know what I'm saying? You gotta step back. You can't pay everybody rent. You know, I can't pay my own, so I go down where I can't pay nobody else. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You know, so, so what's that? <laughs> Is that all? We get ready to go into this lecture. All right. Well, we go, just, we're going to do that in the question and answer for just one minute. Just let me go ahead and roll with some things that's going down here. To show you this man is at war with you. Now, the only, get, the only time that they give you, that they give you a piece of thing that they want to recognize your attributes or your contributions of so-called Black History Month. Well, they didn't give it to us because this would be right. Carter G. Wilson is the one who established that. And he established it around Abraham Lincoln's birthday and Frederick Douglass. It'll be historical about that. We need to get that off of that. They give us because they didn't do that. Uh, Carter G. Wilson did that. And it's what, 28 days? Well, goddamn, that's spiritual. It's a 28 day cycle. That's right on the shit right there because that's exactly what the ancient Egyptians and the ancient Africans based everything around the 28 day cycle. So that's right on time. You don't need 30 days. You see what I'm saying? So that's right on it. You see, so uh, that's very key. But during that particular time, they didn't give, they don't give you, uh, and when we say this, I'm talking about the TV land, they allot that particular time based on your Black History Month to try to give you some types of uh, uh, awareness or whatever. Usually the African American history. You know, that old stuff there, you know. But, uh, it's interesting here, for what it's worth, it's the month that they chose to give you and crucify Michael Jackson the entire month. This is, this is science. This is a form of warfare in the ritual aspect. Now, you know, I know Michael Jackson's a psychopath, but then again, it ain't, he, he's been the same person since the damn ages. But this is the point that gets me, and this is why I know some stuff works, and you gotta understand mind control. I was jamming that damn album off the wall. People came to the house and said, oh man, I wanna rock with you. You were jamming that stuff in the, and I pulled out the bad and the thriller, and we was getting busy off some Michael Jackson. This was in January, the end of January. February came down and they started running all the stuff on the TV, and I reached down to pull up the LP and I stopped and put it back down because I was affected. Me and my conscious ass was affected by what I saw on the TV. And I said, wait a minute, hold on. Something's going on here now. I was jamming this album two days before the special. And all of a sudden now, I'm sick of Michael Jackson. You see? Now, all the stuff that they had choosing Michael Jackson was, he was 10 years ago when they loved him. When white people loved him. Now, Jermaine Jackson said, look, come on. They still mad at the Elvis thing. This is the biggest entertainer the world has ever seen. Now, spite his nose, spite all his things, Michael Jackson is you giving you had a couple of million dollars to change your shit. He's nothing but the manifestation of Millions of niggas over the years that wanted to be white and didn't have the money to do nothing about it. <laughs> now don't blame him. He is a reflection of you. Be you had a goddamn billion dollars. Imagine what the fuck you might do. You know what I'm saying? Might you not look like T.V. Herman or something. Like that. You know? 
Don't you see fields? <laughs> oh, who else are these crackers up? You know what I'm saying? So, it's just like you say, you got to look at the magic of uh, spite his pathology. Well, we are pathological people. You understand? He's just path pathology magnified because he got the money. You see, and he's a part of that doggone world that's going to drive you crazy. But, you got to admit that this man gives you the God essence as the number one entertainer. You understand? Anybody ever went to a Michael Jackson concert? Now, I, I've been to every concert there was. The best show I ever saw was Michael Jackson. That motherfucker put on the show. You want to see a show? Go to Michael Jackson. So the spirit was like, no, remember the magic. Y'all talk shit about Michael Jackson for years. But the spirit said, no, you got to slow down. Say, hold on. Just, you got to see what's going on here. Because they're not attacking him because he's pathological. They're attacking him because they're trying to destroy something that this man is made up of. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when they had the rebuttal, when he did the rebuttal show, they came on. And they showed them black kids that came out to his farm. And all that stuff is free. And that little black boy said, you own all of this? <laughs> he said, yeah. He said, you got to be broke. I know you're broke. <laughs> you should sort of look on those doggone kids' face. So the point is, you know that they are not attacking him because of, um, they're not attacking him because he is the pathological monster. They're attacking him because he possessed what Elvis Never could. And that's what Jermaine Jackson said. Jermaine said, Jackson said he's the number one entertainer in the world. You got to give him that. And they said, outside of this country, when they went to Germany, they still tearing their hair out like you're right. Running behind the car. And when he went to Harlem last summer and talked shit about white folks, that's what this shit was about. What happened? Niggas ran behind the damn car. Harlem. Niggas was running behind the damn car. So the point about it he is, they're going after that icon. And Jermaine Jackson said he's the number one star in the world. And he said, this is what Jermaine Jackson said. And they're going after him because he said, because black pe white people are through with black people. What oh, Jermaine Jackson said. He said, they finished with black people. So they ran this thing and they had the magazines plastered. They had three TV specials plastered. The H1 is still running the special. And I said, wait a minute. This is all doing Black History Month. When they're supposed to be focusing on some other things, here it is. They did it with Michael Jackson. They didn't go as far as that. They did a special on Diana Ross. Yeah, Savage right. and her. Yeah, right. Same, yeah. month. Same month. Yeah. They re-ran re re one on OJ. Yeah. Yeah. And then they ran one on Whitney and Bobby Brown. I'm like, what the hell? So as they got things going on with Black History Month, because they did the Emmett Till story in Black History Month, and they had to counter that. You know, I saw that story. Was that one of the baddest stories that they did? That guy... That guy said that something took his spirit. They had him on the interview. That guy, is on, I think that guy is still in his 20s. And he said he, 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 he worked hard and he worked and he went and, and they had to go and, and get that stuff because the mama died about a week after it aired on TV. You see, so they did the Emmett Till story that went down that same time. They re-ran one on Marcus Garvey. You know, see, Emmett Till is the brother that got killed in 1955 got beat by the uh, clan members or two clan members in Mississippi and instead of the mama having a clothes casket she opened the casket for everybody to see his head beating and as a result a month or two later your girl didn't get on that bus Rosa Parks and black people actually it was because of Emmett Till that black people got tired of white folks and they said we ain't taking this shit no more so she used his death as a catalyst to start the whole civil rights movement. And he was a sacrificial lamb. Now to show you what's going on, we got in touch with him until right after the special. The sister from Kansas back there, Olivia, we tapped in and he came through and he was talking to, you know, you know you can get in touch with these people. And we got in touch and stuff like that. And he was saying, I was a sacrificial lamb and I'm chilling now. Because what happens here is, whenever they get sacrificed like that, they chill, they go to a, a lofty height. He said, I'm, I'm kicking back now. <laughs> Don't want to be there with you, motherfuckers, are. <laughs> you crying for me, I'm crying for you. So, um, 
But they ran that special. They re-ran the Marcus Garvey special. They had several things that they did uh, that, they, that they did do in Black History Month, but they counted all of that by giving you the Michael Jackson, the Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown, the O.J. thing, the Diana Ross. You know, they didn't run all of it, and that's, that's a ritual. In the heart of your month, they could have ran the Michael Jackson story either in January or March. No, but to show you the ritual, they said, we're going to put on the, number one, he's not, he's not just a black figure. He's the number one figure in the world. And, it, and like Jermaine Jackson said, outside of the United States, he, his appeal is the same. His magnetism is the same. And if Michael Jackson was a bus up in here right now, y'all probably move to the back and say, hey, yo, what's, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they did it in Harlem, big time, conscious Harlem. Them niggas ran behind their cars. So this is a this is a uh, 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 this is a uh, this is a part of the same type of ritual that they do. Now look at this, because sister, when y'all start off with something, I wanted to get into, uh, and that's this, because um, this is the way they're gonna run this. We already know this, but this is the way they get ready to run this story here, so you know what's going on. Uh, they get ready to run this story here. Now we know that your boy that got caught with the Taliban, the white boy, yeah. NBC News said that uh, he was inspired through rap music to get into Malcolm X, and from the Malcolm X led him into Islam, and the Islam led him to the Taliban. <laughs> okay, so he was inspired by that. So they already made the connection, because I say, everything is terrorist gonna come back to us. Yep. <laughs> Alright. Hip hop, the sound of terrorism. Okay. Now, they are basing this off of the sniper, uh, John Muhammad. Now you know, you know, and I don't know if you've got my recent tapes, but you know that the same guy who shot Khalid in 1994. That, that, remember Khalid got shot in the legs out of that top college out there? The same guy who shot Khalid in 1994 was the same guy who trained John Muhammad, the so-called terrorist. We know John Muhammad is a CIA operative, is a CIA operative, um, was working for the government. Uh, we know that they made a movie on him during 9-11 called uh, Liberty Stands Still, where Wesley Snipes, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get that, where Wesley Snipes plays John Muhammad, goes to Washington, D.C. with the same sniper gun that, that John Muhammad had. He goes to Washington, D.C. and starts killing people. Got a black accomplice at a hot dog stand in the movie. Liberty Stands Still, get that movie. Stands Still. The movie was made, they had to go to Canada to make it because they didn't want to go to D.C. and you figure it out. It's called Liberty Stand Still and in the movie, Wesley Snipes goes to D.C. and starts shooting people, sniper. Snipes, Wesley. <laughs> All right. They know that the word John is Hebrew for Elijah. You get Elijah in Hebrew, you get John in Christianity, you get Enoch in Hebrew, you get Tahuti in Egypt. Um, Moses is also, there wasn't no historical Moses, I want y'all to know this. That's Tahuti. The staff of Moses and all that stuff, there's, you know, that's Tahuti. It's like uh, Abraham, you think there's an a, a actual man named Abraham, and that's Brahma. Look at the word Brahma in India, and look at the word Abraham, and you descramble de it, and you got what you got here. You see what I'm saying? This is mythology turned into history. Sublime mythology makes grotesque history. So the Jesus thing is mythology turned into history. No historical Jesus. You can get off that tip, because where that motherfucker now? He got some splaining to do. He gonna catch the real beat down. He come up in this motherfucker after we done lost a couple of billion strong. There's no historical Jesus. You see what I'm saying? You need to get that out of your hand because you're cutting your energy. This is the thing that's going to keep you on lockdown. Talk about a historical Jesus. Slaves. You see. Now, John Muhammad is, means Elijah Muhammad. 
is what it means in Hebrew. John is the Christian John. The Christian John is the Hebrew Elijah. So, John Muhammad, this is all key here, because uh, they thought it was a white man the day before they found him. And everybody, it's interesting again, everybody looking for you and you were you asleep in a damn parking lot. Now they talk about MK Ultra, and MK Ultra is also dealing with your diet. Now they talk about how they, uh, the young boy, when they, they said the young boy that summer, uh, John Muhammad only had him only had him eating honey and crackers. Well, they say under mind control, if you they, if you try, if you lock a person's mind into a certain control on a certain diet, you got to keep the diet up. Because if you throw some damn sugar wafers up in there, you might break the coat. So they had him on honey and crackers or something like that. Now that's part MK Ultra. Um, but this is what gets me though, how all this stuff is planned. And I talked about this in another lesson.